When a pond is first built, it usually has crystal clear water and little aquatic life. But over time, the pond can become choked with aquatic plants. This is caused by a process called eutrophication, where the pond accumulates nitrogen and phosphorus from the surrounding watershed area. Eutrophication usually happens slowly, but it can be greatly accelerated by man's activities. Nearby fertilizer applications, septic systems, urban runoff, animal manure, erosion, or wildlife can all add significant amounts of nutrients to a pond, resulting in increased aquatic plant growth. When the plants die in the fall, their nutrients are cycled back into the pond for use by plants the following year. As a result, nutrient levels often increase continually in a pond as more nutrients are added and those in the pond are continually recycled from one year to the next. Reducing aquatic plant growth starts by reducing the nutrients that are feeding the plants. Unfortunately, pond owners seem to be increasingly turning to herbicides or other quick fixes without addressing the nutrients that are causing the problem. But nutrient control doesn't have to be difficult. A simple 30-foot wide buffer strip of unmowed grass around the pond edge and around the springs or streams that feed the pond can act to capture nutrients before they enter the pond. Incorporating native vegetation and wildflowers into the buffer strip can even serve to attract wildlife to the pond. Sediment entering a pond can also stimulate plant and algae growth by delivering nutrients attached to the sediment particles. Sediment that settles out in the pond will also reduce the pond depth, creating shallow areas where more sunlight can reach the bottom and enhance plant growth. Sediment delivery to the pond can be reduced through buffer strips or through wetlands and sediment basins installed ahead of the pond. A small sediment pond or shallow pool can also be constructed near the inlet of the main pond to slow water down and drop sediment where it can be easily accessed and removed with a backhoe. The most important step to reduce nutrients in your pond is to reduce applications of fertilizers or manures near the pond. Just as these fertilizers are intended to stimulate growth of grass and crops, they also act to stimulate the growth of aquatic plants. Sources of nutrients from nearby animals should also be controlled. Runoff from barnyards and pastures should be diverted away from the pond. Fencing should be used to limit farm animals from directly accessing the pond. Even wildlife like Canada geese can be problematic if they occur in large numbers. Their waste contains lots of phosphorus that may stimulate algae growth. A simple buffer strip is often enough to discourage large numbers of Canada geese from taking up residence at your pond. Septic systems should also be located as far from the pond as possible and should be properly maintained. Nutrient control strategies can have a dramatic long-term effect in reducing aquatic plant growth in your pond. Take a few minutes to consider the sources of nutrients near your pond and think about what you can do to reduce their impact, perhaps through the use of a simple unmowed buffer strip around your pond.